All right, guys, so this is gonna be just a quick tip. This isn't a full haircut. You can see that we already have a shag look to it. What I wanna kinda go over today is you can see how it gets heavier in the back here. This was a great look for somebody that wanted to wear this a little wavier and kinda have that buildup of weight in there. But what I wanna do is kind of cut into that, show you guys some techniques that'll actually take this weight line out. We're gonna add a little bit of texture and layers to it, and then I'm gonna go in and start the color. First thing is with dry cutting, I like to use more of a wide tooth comb. So this is the uh, YS Park 332 comb. I like that because it allows me to get through the hair a lot easier. It doesn't pull as much tension. When you're cutting dry hair and you pull a lot of tension, it pulls the hair from where it naturally wants to live. So first things first, I wanna take out this weight. I wanna get the hair cut where I want it to be. And then I'm gonna go in and do my color technique. I'm looking at this shape. I actually really dig it. It's got kind of that uh, off the face, open up the face feel, and then it's got some weight that's getting pushed towards. So we've got some heavy corners in here. So what I wanna do is go in and uh, take out some of that. What I'll do is I'll tilt my guest's head forward, comb the hair down so I can really see that weight. I can see how it kind of curves down that way. And then it collapses right here in the back in the nape area. So you can see how it gets really soft. So I wanna make that a nice smooth transition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a vertical parting straight down the center. I'm gonna hold that out. Now you could see there's a slight disconnection in there and that heavier weight that falls over. That's where you're getting that buildup of density there. So what I'm gonna do is just come in here and I'm gonna use a tease cutting technique to half close the scissor and just take away that weight line and lift and elevate as I pull up. And what that's gonna do is remove that weight line and soften it. Now the thing I like about doing the tease cutting uh, technique is that I'm not creating a really blunt line. So blunt lines are what can really cause a lot of weight in a haircut. So I come up through here and then I'm lifting the hair and half open, half closing the scissor as I lift through. Again, vertical, bringing everything out from the head. Because this is a shag, I don't mind. It does have these corners, but I actually really like, so I want to keep them. So what I'm doing is I'm going to pull everything straight back. This comes straight back. And then I go to my next section, straight back out of the head. Next section, straight back. Not over-directing it into the middle. I'm not trying to push too much weight over, but I'm just pulling it straight back, keeping a nice horizontal line uh, within the weight there. And again, going back into that tease cutting, and you'll see me scoop underneath the hair like this. That's so that I'm always consistently pulling the new hair into my guide instead of pushing my guide into the new hair. So I scoop underneath, bring it back to me. There's where the that disconnection starts. And I'm just going to go in and soften it. And you can see how shattered that is uh, in the line. That's what's going to really soften that weight. So you can see already how that's starting to kind of collapse and lay nicer. I don't mind a little bit of weight because it is a shag and it's going to have a ton of movement and layers in there. But I didn't want that kind of heavy base sitting in it. So then if there's any leftover weight that I just want to remove just a slight bit, I'll take my scissor just like this. And again, it's a half close of the scissor and I'll pinch the hair and kind of cut into that corner a little bit just to soften it. You should be able to see how this side is falling a lot softer than this heavier kind of bulky side. So it just allows your shape to lay nicer, especially when your guest goes to style it, because that's what, you know, the difference is between coming in, doing a precision cut, cutting these blunt lines, and then having your guest go home and try to style it. And now she's got this thick weight that looked good when you blew it dry, but it doesn't look good when she does. And then you're going to be having clients upset with you while they're at home. So same thing, vertical section. Now I'm combing in because I'm combing that new hair into the guide, let the hair fall out, and then elevate as I tease cut and just slide my hand up and remove that weight. So somebody said I tend to lose my guide when doing finishing techniques. Honestly, you are kind of working with a guide, but at the same time, I look at the hair and basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at the hair. I'm trying to find where the bulky parts are. And then I, I assess what do I want to do with that? So what, how do I remove that weight? I'm not necessarily going in to find a guide. What I'm doing is I'm pulling that hair and knowing that I need to lift it. I can see that some of that shorter hair falls out and I can see where the bulk is and then come in here and just slightly remove. There's not really so much a guideline. My guideline is where the weight is and what do I and what I want to do with it. And then I slide through here. This is a half close of the scissor and just remove a little bit of that bulk as well. So it's not changing the haircut. 
it's just making it a little bit, have a little bit lighter feel to it. All right, so we're grabbing some gloves. So I wanna go over the colors that I'm choosing. What I wanna do is create kind of a rooty feel. So we're gonna create that rooty base, and then I'm gonna do two tones through the ends. One is a 6NA, the other is going to be a, uh, a 6SB. These are all Joico colors, Lumashine, all Demi colors. Anytime I'm taking something a little bit deeper, I don't wanna use permanent unless they need 100% gray coverage, but it really brings out the cut, and that's what I want to kind of show you guys today. So anything I do color-wise is just enhance whatever cut I've created. We've got 5N with 1BS. That's a blue, silver, black. So I'm just, we did a dash of the 1BS with a whole um, container of 5N. That's just gonna give me that smoky kind of deeper base. And then the, the level sixes, I don't really wanna change the lightness of the ends here. I'm just trying to give uh, dimension into it. I'm very excited to use these clips that Sam Villa left for me. These are dry hair clips. They have a silicone band in them. So they just, they don't leave creases in the hair, which doesn't really matter so much for coloring, but they hold the hair really nice as well. So we're gonna start off. What I like to do is just take out a horseshoe section on the top. I'm very precise pretty much when I cut hair, not so precise when I color hair. So bear with me on this. We're just gonna get messy and uh, paint. So what I'll do is I'll paint some of the base first, really just around this horseshoe section. And then once I get that horseshoe section on, I'm really staying only about an inch away right now because I don't want to go too deep in there. Then I'm going to split at that division point and I'm going to paint back and forth just to separate that. So that really instead of clipping everything away, I'm, I'm painting it into um, different segments. So now I've got that section right there and then I've got a section in the back here. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So like I said, I'm accenting my cuts. What I want is to show off the texture of a shag. I want there to be two different tones that are kind of mixing and going throughout the, the haircut. But I'm not really concerned with it being like perfectly applied because I'd rather just it be more kind of organic anyways. So I painted the root on this piece. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna start off with a 6NA. I'm gonna paint that through the ends and then I'll take my next section. I've got the uh, level five, my deepest root color. I bring that down. I'm gonna paint that root right there and then I'm gonna pull that section out and I'm gonna paint it with another, the 6SB to bring this down. This is great for your clients that aren't looking for a big change. Like I think every client needs to have some sort of dimension to help their, to show off the haircut. So instead of doing just a regular base touch-up, do their base touch-up, but then use two different tones throughout to give it that movement. So a 5N with a 1BS, so really deepening the root area of the guest and then going through and using multi-tones throughout the ends. You could do fantasy color on the ends. You can kind of do whatever you want. So I put that at the base, the five in with one BS, and then I go six NA through the ends. And then I rotate um, going through with the uh, six SB. Am I wiping the color off on my gloves when I change sections? Nope. Um, that's kind of part of the whole organic thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm not touching the five, level 5N five with the uh, 1BS. That's not hitting my gloves, but the two other tones are. These are gonna live so much, so similar, but at the same time, they will have a little bit different tone to them. So that's where I'm not like, I'm not super concerned with them mixing together, touching each other. It's not, that's not a big deal. And that's part of that whole organic feel. And also this is all horizontal. So those of you guys that are, watching this and kind of understand how horizontal, diagonal, or vertical placement changes things. Vertical is gonna be the most separation within the tones. And then you have diagonal, which will be a soft blend of the tones. And then horizontal, which is the strongest blend because they're all falling uh, on top of each other. So this is gonna be very blended. What I love though, is that I'm, I'm coloring this horizontally and the haircut lives uh, as a round shape. So the difference is, if she wore it straight down, it would be very blended. But what she's gonna wear it is as textured and probably more towards her face um, to show off that texture. So then it's going to be actually diagonal because of how she's gonna wear it. 
So you have to take into consideration how she's going to style it as well. It's just as important as the placement of the color. So again, guys, just rotating. And because these are deeper tones like uh, greens and grays and blues, and that's where it's going to kind of shift this brown hair color. And for real, I'm very, my sectioning, I don't even care if it's perfect because, I mean, obviously you got to color everything, but I want it to kind of have an organic feel to it. This is something I want you guys to understand too. Like I don't want these tones, definitely don't want the levels to really be any different. It's more natural to me if hair moves and has different tones to it than if it's just one solid tone. So that's really the goal with this. You're not going to see in the end result a big difference in the color. Like you're just going to see a root. You're going to see a deeper root and you're going to see probably like a shiny, earthy looking toned hair color. But then when I style it, I think you're going to see it pop and the haircut's just going to look so much cooler because it has movement to it. So now I'm going to work in the top and the top I am going to do more uh, vertically. Now, if my color or my tones were, my levels were way different, I would not do vertical straps throughout the top because it would look stripey. I saw a girl yesterday at a restaurant that uh, had that same thing. Hers was blonde and black, not what we're going for. But when you have tones and levels that are the same and you're really trying to make that stand out a little bit, you kind of need to do these vertical straps because that's going to help show them off a little bit more instead of blending them all together. All right, last section here, right in the fringe area. Now with the fringe, I'm not gonna paint the ends. I'm actually gonna color this the whole deep color. Um, I like kind of a nice deep fringe anyways. And then with a shag, it kind of gets textured and lays over that as well. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go all in with the uh, darker tone. It's probably hard to see. And like I said, these are the same level. So they're not gonna be that different. It's just different tones going throughout the hair. Um, the blue from the SB, that like silver color, silver tone, is going to help kind of neutralize some of those orangier things. But then also we got the green in there, so we're going to keep some of the gold. So it's like, I still want this to have a richness to it, but I don't want it to be orange. That's not the, the plan. All right, so I'm going to go through, blow dry, flat wrapping. And then as I kind of blow dry this around... Then I'll brush some down and just start smoothing and do a little bit of a lift, leafing technique, and just continue flat wrapping. My goal is to not blow dry in a part. And these colors work really well for taking like brown hair that usually has those like really orangey, kind of deeper orangey tones and just taking that tone out. I don't know how well you guys can start to see this, but you just see all the different depth, the lighter, this like the deeper. It's like some of the 6NA. Um, and it just like comes through. So it's not that it's so different, but it looks like I did like a weave of all different tones throughout the hair, but they all live on the same level. And that's like just what can really make your client's hair stand out, I think. Do I use flat wrapping on all my clients? Most of the time, yes, because most of the time I'm preparing them to uh, to cut them. I do a lot of dry cutting. I mean, I do my base cutting wet and then um, I go in and, you know, detail it dry. So no matter what, even if I'm going to give them some volume, I'll go through and do a flat wrap because flat wrapping doesn't necessarily not give you volume. It just uh, gets the hair kind of smooth to the head and does it without a part. So it's ideal for situations where you're dry cutting and working through the hair. Okay, so we're going to style it up with Beach Shake. Uh, it's a Joyco product. It's like an explosion of texture comes out of this thing. Let's see here. So um, even though these are not crazy different level, you've got your depth at the bottom, which is a level darker than the ends. So it's a level five with a little bit of depth put into it. And then you have your level six ends in two different tones. So that's where you see depth and multiple tones kind of throughout it, but it's not crazy. It's not all over the place. Obviously you could do that if you wanted, if you wanted to mix in some lightener with that or freehand paint some stuff. So understand that just like haircutting, coloring is so similar in a way of this technique isn't just saying, hey guys, go color uh, two different browns at a level six and do a level five base. Like this is have fun with your tones, 
Pickett, if your guest comes in, she always gets a level five touch up and you want to give her something a little fresher, you want to make her excited about her next visit, then talk about the multiple tones, the dimensional color that you can put in there. Talk about those things, get her excited about next visit, and then all of a sudden she'll be coming back in uh, sooner to get that dimensional color that she's that you've got her all amped about. So all these different tones throughout it. Hope you guys like it. Uh, this shag haircut is super fun. But that is, you know, the color technique. And uh, that is all. <laughs> <laughs>